What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.7 beta 5 to both registered developers and to public beta testers right away, which is pretty interesting. So this comes about two weeks after the release of beta 4. And in addition to iOS, we also got iPadOS 14.7 beta 5, watchOS 7.6 beta 5, macOS Big Sur 11.5 beta 5, and tvOS 14.7 beta 5 but of course in this video we're talking all about ios and ipad os and what's new along with when to expect the final release of ios 14.7 because it is very soon and also we'll talk about the next beta for ios 15 if you are not on ios 14 anymore so anyways let's go ahead and start off with the size of this update you can see here it came in at 307.4 megabytes on my iphone 12 coming from beta 4 so the size of course will vary depending on your device and the version you are coming from if you go ahead into our settings and check out the build number settings general about 14.7 you can see the build here is 18g 5063a so we do have an a at the end of the build number which does indicate that this is very likely the final beta so we could either see an rc or this could be you know the kind of rc in disguise so we'll talk more about that near the end of this video but if we go down a little bit to the modem firmware down here, you can see this has a very minor update from beta four. So it's 1.80.02. It was 1.80.01 .01 in beta four. So just a very minor update, but we do have an update in the modem firmware for the first time since beta three. So now what is new here in beta five? And just like every other release of iOS 14.7, the release notes don't really tell much at all and if we take a look at the release notes here for beta 5 there's only one thing mentioned and that is this known issue with the sk ad network so that's it i mean and that's not going to matter to 99 percent of you guys watching this video so really you know nothing has changed according to the release notes and you can see of course in beta 4 the only thing was a resolved issue with battery health where it says restored battery service messages that may have disappeared after reboot on some iphone 11 models so i talked about that in the beta 4 video and that was really the only thing mentioned in the release notes really throughout all of ios 14.7 i mean there's really been nothing at all mentioned in the release notes and even after going through all the software you guys know i did show you some of the hidden features here in 14.7 but there really wasn't that much i mean there's really only a few changes like in podcasts of course we do have the timer inside of the home pod just things like that but really minor update overall and especially once we're here in the fifth beta so as expected i mean i don't think anybody clicked on this video expecting there to be a major feature a major change especially because apple is going to be putting those in ios 15 if anything so you know i've not found anything else new here now i did notice that i did get a new splash screen when i went into the app store so of course this isn't really anything new but it was kind of just something interesting i noticed when going into the app store i got this new splash screen, not new splash screen, but i got it for the first time here on beta 5 even though i've you know opened the application before obviously so it's pretty interesting to see that splash screen right there but as far as anything else goes really nothing new in terms of you know features that you can visually see however i did want to take some time to talk about spatial and lossless audio because there's a pretty big issue going on now first of all i did just want to give an update for those living in india you still do not have access to spatial and lossless audio unfortunately that will be coming pretty soon but it's not going to be coming you know in a software update i believe that will be released via you know a server side update just like it was when it initially rolled out to the us so if you're in india you will get spatial and lossless audio it's going to be rolling out soon there's really no date on that yet but as far as overall in 14.7 beta 5 nothing has changed with spatial or lossless audio however once again many people are having a bug with apple music related to spatial and lossless audio and that is the 15 second bug where some people can only play music for about 15 seconds with this turned on before it just stops and gives them an error so numerous people on twitter you know in my mentions on apple support forums and the comments here on youtube everywhere have been reporting this and the crazy part is it's happening on android as well so it could possibly be a server side issue or it could be just an issue with the music application on both ios and android it's hard to say at this point but of course if you go into your settings here and then if we go down to music and then to dolby atmos right here some people may just need to turn this off and of course go to audio quality and turn lossless off as well 
to enjoy listening to their music again. And you know, you just won't be able to take advantage of these new features. There are some solutions and I will leave an article link down below that may help you with that. But for most people, none of those work. So I'm sure Apple is aware of this. It's very popular right now. I have not had this one time on any of my devices on any version. So this is not just happening on the betas. This is happening on iOS 14.6, on iOS 15, on 14.7 betas. This is a very big issue and I'm sure Apple is aware of that. So we should be seeing a fix very soon. And again, I'm not sure if it's going to be a server side fix or if it's going to be an actual, you know, iOS update fix. So we'll have to wait and see, but I will be keeping an eye on that. And speaking of music, we also have the music cue bug still present here in iOS 14.7. When you press shuffle or just play anywhere and you go into the queue right here and the first song is sometimes not able to be moved the three lines they are just invisible so that is still going on but i have noticed that it happens a lot less frequently nowadays so it seems like apple is definitely working on that but it is still not fully fixed yet so that's something still present here in the 14.7 betas also green tint is one thing that i haven't really seen a lot of people talking about lately so i would assume that the green tint issue or bug has been resolved in either iOS 14.7 or iOS 15. I don't know what it is, but I've just been seeing a lot less comments about that. So I am assuming it has been fixed for most people, just like you know what happened with the iPhone 10R a couple of years ago when it got fixed via software. And I'm also having issues with Sidecar here in 14.7 beta 5. I did just test this out and I'm still having issues with Sidecar connecting to an iPad. Sometimes I get an error and sometimes it only uses half of the iPad's screen and not the full screen when using sidecar so hopefully that will be fixed it works fine in ios 15 but for whatever reason it does not work here in ios 14.7 but as far as anything else in ios 14.7 goes that's about all you know that i found and really all that i can talk about because there's really not too much going on with ios 14.7 as a whole so if you guys have anything else you would like me to add let me know in a comment down below maybe in my rc video or the final video let me know but nowadays it seems like you know with beta 4 and beta 5 i'm really kind of just rehashing everything from betas 1 through 3 because not too much has changed so that also tells me that the final is right around the corner and we'll talk about that in a moment but anyways let's talk about the performance because the performance feels very smooth here on beta 5. now it's not really much different from beta 4. i'm not using this every single day so it's really hard to tell you specifics but it feels about the same as beta 4. so smooth not really having any app crashes everything runs fine and it's definitely going to be you know a better performer than ios 15. ios 15 is going to have the lag the app crashes and things like that ios 14.7 you're not going to have that on this late of a beta now as far as the geekbench scores go i did run a geekbench score or a test here and i did not score very high i got a 1583 on the single and a 3808 on the multi-core but of course that was directly after installing this and things were still kind of reorganizing themselves in the background so i will run another test and i will share that with you guys in my follow-up this weekend where i will be mostly talking about ios 15 but i will also briefly talk about ios 14.7 beta 5 in that video but performance is going to be fine here on beta 5 and this does have an a at the end of the build which indicates this is going to be a very stable build and of course we're on 8.7 so you can expect the performance to be very good and it's the same with battery life again i'm not using this every single day but battery life is going to be about the same as before ios 15 betas even came out because the battery life really hasn't changed much at all throughout these beta stages so battery life is going to be solid here on beta 5 as well and some people did report issues with ios 14.6 so i would definitely expect ios 14.7 to fix those battery drain issues or just battery issues overall that some users were facing in 14.6 all right so now let's talk about what is next for apple so today is thursday july 8th so we did get this beta on a thursday and i do think that this is going to be the final beta before an rc build especially given the fact that this has an a at the end of the build number and we also got the public beta at the same time as the developer beta usually it's like a day after but we got it at the same time today which does usually indicate that you know the next release the next version of 14.7 will either be the rc or the final this could actually be the rc in disguise since it does have an a at the end of the build number but we'll have to wait and see so next week we'll either see the rc build or the final of 14.7 so any day next week apple is really unpredictable nowadays so i'm just going to go ahead and say any day next week for the rc and then the final on the week of the 19th now again it could be the final on the week of the 12th if this is indeed the rc build 
So we'll have to wait and see next week what happens, but we are very close to a 14.7 final release. Now, as for iOS 15, I would expect to see developer beta three next week. So the week of the 12th, most likely, you know, early in the week, we will see iOS 15 developer beta three. Now, if you're on the public beta, we could see public beta three as soon as a couple of days after the developer beta or as late as a week after the developer beta. So we've seen that before where the public beta comes out a whole week after the developer beta, but it seems like Apple is kind of, you know, making them closer together than before. So I would expect to see the public beta a few days after the developer beta and we should see beta 3 next week on the week of the 12th because that will be two weeks after the release of the public beta which came out on the 30th so if we want it to be exactly two weeks it would be right there on wednesday the 14th so that is a good possibility of when we can see ios 15 beta 3. but anyways guys there you have it that is ios 14.7 beta 5 a very very minor update but of course you guys know i like to bring you every single update no matter how minor or major it is so if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and of course make sure you subscribe so you don't miss all of the content coming next week we should see ios 14.7 something with ios 14.7 whether that's the final or the or the uh, rc build and we should also see ios 15 beta 3 next week so it should be pretty pretty exciting so if you're excited for that make sure you hit subscribe and stay tuned for those videos but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon